In this video, we'll take a look at uh, finding the average rate of change and also approximating instantaneous, instantaneous rate of change for uh, uh, between two points for a secant and at a certain point on a particular function. Now, in order to calculate average rate of change, it's a change in the y value divided by a change in the x value, or rise over run, or we can use the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The secant here is a, is a line segment that joins P to Q, so it goes through the point P to Q. And this be the change in Y between these two Y coordinates, and delta X is the change in X from X1 to X2. Now, if we want to get an approximation for the actual slope of the tangent line, that's the red line here, it's tangent at Q, it touches the curve only at Q, then what we could do is take this point P and move it along the curve here. So let's say we move P to that point right there, and then drew the tangent from that new P point to, to Q. And so notice that the slope of that new secant, the brown one, is a little bit steeper than the original secant, so its slope is a little bit closer to the red one, the, the tangent line. And so if we take that point and move it even closer, let's say we move it all the way up to here, and then draw the secant between that new point and Q, and the secant would look like this. And so notice that that new secant, which this green one here, it's getting to look a lot more like the tangent line. And that's because of the fact that these two points are getting fairly close together. The closer you move that point to Q, the better the secant looks like the actual tangent line, the red line. And we're going to use that idea in the example a little later on in the lesson. Uh, on the second page, now same diagram here. The difference quotient is, uh, it's a rate of change formula. And the slope of the secant line between the point at a f of a and q a plus h f of a plus h is, and I'll get into this formula in a minute, I'm going to change around this diagram a bit. Instead of calling them p and q, we're going to use this terminology here. So on the diagram, I'm going to take that point P out, and we're going to call this X coordinate A. So instead of calling that the point X1, Y1, A is the X coordinate. The Y value, or function value, is what we get if we put A in the function. So if we put A in place of X, F of A is what Y would equal. So that's why we call that point the point A comma F of A. Now for Q here, if we come down to the x-axis. Now the horizontal distance across here is h. So that's why I would call this the point a plus h. So this is a to here and then another h makes that a plus h. Now the change in x from here to here, which is this horizontal distance across here, is this x-coordinate minus this x-coordinate. So a plus h minus the a, which of course simplifies to just h. So that's h is the horizontal distance between the two points. Now instead of calling this the point x2, y2, a plus h is the x coordinate. If we put a plus h in place of x in the function, then f of a plus h is the y value. In order to get the change in y between this point and this point, or point P and point Q, we would subtract their y coordinates. So this minus this, and that's exactly what's written there. Now, just, I just took out the uh, change in y. So the rise here is f of a plus h minus f of a. The run is the h distance between them. So the change in y over change in x, this is the change in uh, y, the rise, and h is the change in x. So this will simplify to h. And so the uh, difference quotient is, and this is the rise really between those two points, and h is the run. So this is the difference quotient for calculating the slope of that secant line. And of course, uh, it's valid unless h was 0. h cannot equal 0, because if h were equal to 0, then this point would actually be on top of that point, and then the run would have a value of 0, so this expression would not be defined. h can get really close to 0, but it can never actually equal 0.
Now, um, this is an example that I'm going to do on the next couple of pages. And in this example, Kevin is staying at his grandparents' apartment. He, he lays a baseball on an open window ledge and it falls off. And of course, uh, his uh, grandparents live quite far up. The window is 70 meters above the street below. So we're, asked, we're going to do four things here. Determine a formula for the average rate of change of the height in terms of the initial height, the 70 meters in time. And there's a formula for that. Uh, then we're going to use that to calculate the average rate of change uh, between one and two and a half seconds. And then the instantaneous rate at one and two and a half seconds. And then we're going to find the equation of the tangent line at two and a half seconds. So first of all, uh, a formula for the average rate of change of uh, uh, in terms of the height and the time. So now there's two H's here because of the formula. This red H refers to the initial height. It falls from 70 meters. And so we put 70 in place of that one, not to be confused with the uh, H in the formula. And I'll, I'll discuss that when we get to it. So that's the formula for the uh, S of T is the height or the distance above the pavement uh, in terms of time. So S of T is 70 minus 4.9 times T squared. If we wanted to find the initial height, for example, uh, T would be 0. So this would be 0 and it starts at 70. Now to find an expression for the average rate of change, we would use that difference quotient. Uh, instead of f, I'm using s here because that's the name of my function. And so otherwise, this is the same as what was on the uh, bottom of the second previous page. Now, so in order to find s of a plus h, we would put a plus h in place of t here. So it would be 70 minus 4.9 times a plus h squared, which is exactly what's here. s of a, we would put a in place of time. So it would be 70 minus 4.9 times a squared, which is what's in the square brackets here. So s of a plus h is this amount here. s of a is what's in the square brackets. And what we're going to do now is expand this and collect the like terms. So a plus h squared, a squared is a squared, h squared in the end is h squared. And remember uh, the shortcut for squaring, if you double 2 times a times h, you get the middle term. And of course, a squared is just a squared in the end here. So let's multiply the negative 4.9 in here, uh, 70, and then be minus 4.9a squared, minus 4.9 times the 2ah would be negative 9.8ah. And negative 4.9 times the h squared is minus 4.9h squared. Taking the brackets off here, that just changes the signs because we're really multiplying by negative 1. So minus 70 and then plus the 4.9a squared. And in these kinds of questions, you will generally get some terms to add to 0. For example, those 70 and negative 70s are opposites, as are the negative 4.9a squared and the positive 4.9a squared. So that all adds to 0. So we really just have these two terms here. And notice that they both have a common factor, they have a common factor of h in them. So this h will divide out. So if we divide h into this, we get negative 9.8a minus 4.9 times h. Now, this h is the horizontal distance between points. Remember that red h stood for the initial height. Okay, So those do not mean the same thing. What a represents here is the time, the uh, one second or two and a half seconds. So that's the formula we're asked for in A. Uh, this gives you the average rate of change, the speed it's falling in terms of a particular time, and uh, the, the distance between uh, the two times, for example, from the one to two and a half seconds. In B here, we're going to use that formula. And we were asked to find, and this is one second and this is at two and a half seconds. So we're asked to find the uh, average rate of change. In other words, what's the average velocity it's falling from one second to two and a half seconds. So A is the um, initial time. And if we're going from one to two and a half seconds, then H would be a, an interval time of 1.5. So that's why H is 1.5 because two and a half seconds, the end of the interval, is 1.5 after one. Remember, the h is the length of the time interval horizontally on the graph. And so if we calculate this, that's negative 9.8. This is minus 7.35, which works out to be a little bit below negative 17. 
And so that's the average velocity between here and here. And it does, should make sense from the graph. If we draw in the secant line, um, if we now this almost goes through that point. See, that's a time of one second. So notice it's gone down about 15 in one second. So it, that it does agree with the graph that it looks like the slopes around negative 15, negative 15, negative 17 is pretty close. And of course, the negative means that it's falling as opposed to rising. For C, okay, same formula here, but we're asked to find the instantaneous rate of change at one second and then also at two and a half. So there's two parts to C. Now, in order to find the instantaneous rate of change, we let that distance or uh, amount of time between the beginning of the interval and the end of the interval to be a very, very, very small number. So if I want to in, um, approximate the instantaneous rate of change at one second, well, A is the one second, and I would put a really small number like 0 0.001. That's one one-thousandths, or, or even a hundredth isn't bad. Um, in the last example, H was 1.5, because we were talking about an average rate of change over a fairly long amount of time, the 1.5 seconds. But for instantaneous, you put a very small number in place of H. And that gives you a pretty good approximation of what the real instantaneous velocity would be at one second. So basically, this amounts to a very, very close to zero, and you get about negative 9.8. So at one second, it's traveling at about negative 9.8 meters per second, pretty close to negative 10 meters per second. So if this uh, uh, ball had a speedometer on it, um, then at one second, it would be registering very close to minus 10 meters per second. So now we're going to do uh, the uh, 2.5. So we put 2.5 in place of A, and again, a very small number in place of H to get the instantaneous approximation. And so negative 9.8 times 2.5 is about negative 24.5 meters per second. So if we drew in the two uh, tangent lines here and here, the slope of this tangent line would be the negative 9.8. The slope of this tangent line would be steeper at negative 24 and a half. So those are the instantaneous, those are really good approximations for the instantaneous velocities at one and two and a half seconds. Now the last thing we're asked to do in D is find the equation of the tangent line at two and a half. So we need to find the y coordinate there. It looks like it's pretty close to 40. So in the original uh, function, uh, the s of t was 70 minus 4.9 times time squared, uh, beginning of the previous page, I believe it was. We would uh, substitute 2.5 seconds, because that's the time, or x coordinates, the time coordinate, actually. And so that works out to 39.375. So we yeah, are pretty close to 40. So that's really the y coordinate if this is the x coordinate. And so in the point slope form equation, the y value or function value is the 39.375, the uh, times 2.5. Now we're not actually using x, we're using t for the uh, variable, the horizontal axis variable. And the slope was negative 24.5. We found that from the second part of question c. That's the um, tangent line slope, uh, instantaneous rate of change, same thing from c. And so if we expand this out, negative 24.5 times t is negative 24.5t. Negative 24.5 times a negative 2.5 is about 61.25. And then I'll solve for s, just like we would often solve for y if we had y in this very, on this axis. And s is about negative 24.5 plus, and we would have 61.25. We would add the 39.375 to get uh, just over 100. So that would be the uh, tangent line, an equation for the tangent line equation here. And that's the actual tangent line. And notice it's going up fairly steep. It looks like, yeah, the y-intercept will be pretty close to 100. And of course, the slope of this is negative 24 and a half. Uh, we can actually verify that seems to be correct. This is pretty close. So if we go down one, two, three, four, five blocks, and one over, see, that's one second. Five blocks would actually, each one's five. So it goes down about negative 25 for every one over. So it does really look like the slope is very close to negative 24 and a half. So that's the slope of the, the equation of the tangent at 2.5 seconds.